Hi guys, thank you for stopping by. As you can tell by the title, today I want to discuss with you how I got a job um, without a degree in tech and computer science or anything, even though I did go to school. So stick around and let's find out how I did it. It does not have anything to do with this book. I just bought it. Um, I saw the pictures inside. You know, it has like a page where there's pictures. The rest of the book is brown, but then there's some pictures that are in a white paper. You know, very interesting pictures. But the story has nothing to do with this, so yeah, it stays there. So it all started in metric when I joined a WhatsApp group um, of Africans and Indians mostly. And they were talking about all things IT, so from torrents, you know, like sharing movie links, um, to discussing like basic hacking skills. It was just like an IT group that, you know, shares everything related to IT. Um, and then from there, a friend of mine, um, a high school friend of mine, picked up a book at our local library in Bumalanga. And the book was about writing basic HTML. And after he used it for some time, he told me about it and I went to pick it up. Luckily, at that time, I had a computer that I was able to use at home. You know, it's a computer that was used by my friends for music production. I was kind of into that then but yeah I, I, I still suck so i was able to use that computer to learn you know basic html templating um i was able to do a bit of that and then i also jumped into android side of things um mind you it was still then in like metric um I did not really finish the Android side of things, you know, I did pause a bit because the computer was just basically too slow to handle the Android development. Um, so I paused that and I continued with trying to do HTML side of things. And then from there I developed my first app, which was the Nestacy app. Um, it was put up, you know, there was a download link for it, but I lost it and I can't get it anymore. So I use an online platform to create that app, but you know, all of that exposure leading me to that was because of that book that we got in the library, the WhatsApp group and everything else. So things are just building up and piling up at this moment. Um, and towards the end of the year, I had not really planned to study computer science, an IT degree thing. Um, I was just honestly winging it, you know, it's, I'm in matric, I'm just trying to focus on my grades and unfortunately my mom passed as well in that grade um, about like three weeks before my exams. So I was just trying to grind out um, my exams and yeah, I was done with that, you know, my marks are not bad. So after then, remind, remind you, remind you, um, I had not applied for any computer science thing. Everything else that I applied for um, was rejected. So I can't remember what it is, but I applied to vets for some high level degrees. I think like applied mathematics and something. And yeah, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but um, come 2017, which was you know, when I had basically finished my matric and I had to find a place somewhere at an institution and I happened to find Rosbank College who at the time was offering an IT um, diploma in software development or yeah IT diploma in software development so I was able to get in there um, with the help of like my uncle you know, he helped me with like some stuff there got in um, and that's how my formal education in you know um, coding starts yeah I was able to push my first day I did pretty well I think you know um, I was able to understand basic principles of programming because I had been playing around um, with that and then yeah the only thing that gave me a tough time in college um, were arrays in Java it took me some time to get them I don't know how they were, they were giving me a headache but that happened um, after figuring that out, you know, things were pretty much smooth. Everything else uh, that we were using in Java was okay for me. And then we moved on to the second year. Um, yeah, the second year, things were also okay at Rosbank College. You know, it's a pretty good institution. The lectures were not bad at all. Even though I feel like some of their modules were saturated, like they were teaching us English. Like, I'm here to learn IT in software development. I believe that for the past 10 years, 
I've been learning English and then you still want to teach me more English instead of you know, teaching me you know, more technical side of things but that's okay you know I guess they have to give the money's worth um, of their course so fast forward in second year um, Donald and I who's a friend of mine make the taxi math app and then that app sort of got traction um, on like social media and you know I started to be reckless a bit then with my spending because the man that I had at that time or the man that I was getting was strictly for me pay my tuition fees every month buying groceries going to school right that was all that money was able to do or was supposed to do but me being me because of this app then I started to buy domains you know to try and push it you know fast forward to third year which is 2019 I was not able to register because I had child money in a way from my second year that was meant to be for my tuition fees I was owing not a lot but it was still significant to a point where I could not register for my third year um, so yeah that was me can't continue with school what's the plan um, in that year start of 2019 I did you know have friends who were um, in a similar situation as me as well and you know they had sort of got jobs and were okay so I was like okay so all I need to do now is invest in my craft you know what I need to do to show to employees I mean employers that I'm employable you know and also just increase my craft as a whole because I did see that you can um, tackle you know this thing without being in a formal institution so one of the first things that I did with the money that I was chowing um, on my, in my second year was buy this their laptop um, I think I got it for like 2.5 I can't remember it's still kicking a bit so it has some issues but you know this thing kept me running and then on fast forward to April of 2019 the 1st of April I started my first job at a company in Pretoria um, it was a very small company it's I think I don't think it's still in operation now um, started my first job there and when I went for the interview the manager basically said what made me stand out were my projects so within um, you know like January of 2019 to April between that period I was busy you know making Java projects putting them on github um, just trying to make myself you know stand out with my resume or portfolio whatever you want to call it and that's what the manager basically said that you seem to have experience um, all the other people submitted you know like their diplomas not saying that's a bad thing but other people submitted like their qualifications and you know you don't have one but you submitted you know proof of work in a way and that made you stand out it's like i bet so i started working there you know with this computer of mine um built their website and there i was working in javascript um html css you know just for their website nothing too hectic i did touch on some java a bit um and then there i stayed for two months ended up leaving because it was you know the money that i was getting there was not worth it in a way you know i was so two taxis to go to work two taxis to come back and then sometimes it would be three taxis because i have to take a local taxi to the taxi rank um for my taxi rank i have to go to pretoria cbd from Pretoria CBD, I have to go to the workplace and then vice versa. Even when I'm coming back, take a taxi from there to Pretoria CBD, from to Pretoria CBD to uh, my hometown, from the hometown to the house, you know, with a local taxi or walk. So it was not feasible or viable anymore for me to be in that job still. So decided to call it quits. Um, you know, but the manager did give me a nice opportunity you know, with getting me started. Um, and I did, you know, manage to see how things are like in a real workplace. Um, but unfortunately, I just couldn't stay there anymore because of those reasons. And then I think I stayed for almost a month. Um, and a friend of mine, Donald, once again, um, he plugged me with a job at my second company. 
and that's where I stayed for more than two years um, because you know it was just amazing so yeah how I got that job as well you know it was also a Java related role um, they also saw my projects I've been busy with projects as well so my projects um, throughout my whole career spoke for me um, I did not have to do much speaking apart from no I have to bring some personality as well I don't have much but I bring um, a bit of it so yeah even in that interview you know they wanted to see the projects that i made um they saw them i spoke to them you know also being honest that i don't know a lot of things i'm still like a junior dev in a way um but you know there's room for, for improvements you know there's ways that i learn um how i like to learn and if that resonates with how they do things at the company then you know things tend to look good for you so i got that job Immediately, I was put on a Java project and then during my time there at that company, I managed to pick up a bit of React, um, React Native. I also did play with some PHP as well and I had a good time, you know, um, and my only reason to leave that company after like almost like no over two years was because I was just looking for a new challenge and I moved, you know, never be afraid to move when you're in this you know um, ecosystem because it's always a good idea for you to either move within the company itself you know be placed on like different tech stacks different teams um, departments or whatever or just move from the whole company um, so I moved and I got into the security space uh, at that company they were using react native and I had moved with the ambition that I was going to use flutter you know that's that, that that was one of my reasons to also leave you know the company that i've been with for two years because i want to try different technologies that at that time they were not exploring that much so yeah even when i got there they were using react native um fine i used it you know for like six months and then i started looking elsewhere um and I managed to find my current company, which uses Flutter, which is very nice. Um, yeah, so that's in a nutshell my career. I've been with three, three companies. One, two, three, four. I've been with four companies um, within the space of from 2019 to 2023. I don't know how. What's I don't know. I don't know. Like, okay. uh, so from 2019 to 2023, I've been with four companies, one for two months, the other one for six months. Um, the longest one being over two years and my current one, it's over one year. So, you know, that's just the trajectory of um, a career, how I moved, the different tech stacks that I used. And obviously when you move, you know, um, salaries increase as well. Uh, so tips and tricks into getting you know a job in South Africa without a degree or a diploma um, from my experience and what you know obviously I have experience and what I have went through um, if you can afford to go to college or varsity I would definitely recommend that you go um, it's not a bad idea to have a formalized and structured you know way of learning so I would recommend you go there if you have the means to definitely go. If you do not have the means, there are boot camps. You know, in South Africa we have Within Code, which offers free learning um, or teaching for two years, and they give you a stipend. They're based in Devon, Cape Town, and Joburg. Um, they do pretty well. I think after if things are looking good for you, you are immediately placed at a company um, as a graduate dev or like a, as an intern um, or a junior. I don't know. Uh, there are Hyperion dev. There are a lot of boot camps in South Africa that you can go to, even online learning platforms um, that you can use to um, you know, teach yourself. The bad thing about boot camps is that they are usually expensive. And then there's taking things raw, um, stepping in, you know, without a degree or any formal learning. So in this way, you want to make sure that you have projects. And apart from making your own projects to showcase your skills, I would also recommend that you attend things called hackathons. So hackathons are where you just go, you get you no know, solutions that you need to cater for. 
you build those solutions you build those solutions um and then you know you win prizes you get to network with other gigs that are there you know share skills um you may also get opportunities there that are often companies looking to hire in a way um and yeah you know keep knocking keep your foot at the door and if there's any more info that you want to know of uh you are free to dm me i'm mostly active on twitter so you can dm me there yeah and then i will make time to reply <laughs>